Hi friends, welcome to a ratio. This week I want to talk a little bit about what's been going on in my brain as we're processing Michael's uh, moving on from Brave Commons, formal leadership position, and of course he'll always be a part of our mission and our vision and our team here at Brave Commons. Um, but as we as we are processing Michael's next steps and and are dreaming here at Brave Commons for what will come next, I've been thinking this week about radical community, about what it means and in practice how we do it, and the fact that oftentimes when we hear about Christianity, when we hear the pitch, the point is salvation. That's what we're told. The point is to be saved. And yet, I don't think salvation is the main lesson, the main point that we receive from the Christian tradition. In fact, the main point is radical community. It is the connection with one another in which we experience divinity. And that moves beyond religious diversity that moves, it crosses boundaries. It feels limitless. There was one evening where I was talking to my friend Min. This was probably at least three years ago now. Min was my first queer friend in the queer community in Washington, D.C. We became friends shortly after my first big breakup. I was a mess and she became my person within the community. We went to dance parties together. We were each other's wing person. We hung out all the time. And there was one time where we were hanging out at Min's place and we started talking about religion and faith and belief. And Min defines herself as an atheist and I usually as a Christian. And we had this, this honest, vulnerable conversation about what those labels meant for each of us. I felt no shame and no fear to be honest with her about how I felt leading worship at times or being a part of church services or going to Bible study groups. And she shared with me what it meant for her to define herself as an atheist and why she made those distinctions and why it felt true and intimate and important to her. And we experienced something holy together. And it was radical community. It was an experience of spirit that I had previously only known or only been told to know and define as within church services, within worship services, within small group, within Christian people. And yet, I feel like especially and even in the Christian scriptures, the Christian holy text, the person of Jesus informs this position. The person of Jesus, uh, gosh, I can't think of the word, what is it? The person of Jesus demonstrates this. The person of Jesus shows that radical community keeps expanding and doesn't stop. It is defined in a thousand, a million different ways. And it is always informed by our contexts and by our differences. We have all experienced grace and hope, freedom, tragedy, suffering, and experience the connection we have with one another, even in the midst of the difficult parts and the joyful parts. We've experienced that connection we have together, even when everything goes wrong and when everything goes right. We've experienced celebration. We've experienced mourning. We've experienced the intimate spirit that exists within one another when we gather together, period not based on a religious label, not based on a church building, not based on a Bible study curriculum, based on the fact that we chose 
each other. That, I think, is the central lesson of Christianity, is that we choose one another. And it is unique to us. Your story, your community, your specific community matters. Yours in the Eastern United States or Midwestern or Southern United States, mine in the Western United States, my friends in Spain or England or China or Nigeria or Vietnam, their unique communities and their, their unique experience of spirit matters. There are a million different cathedrals spread out over a million miles in the midst of forests, in the midst of city buildings, in the midst of suburban houses, in the midst of tents, tents on the sides of freeways. There are a million different cathedrals already existing under different religious names, other, under different religious practices, under no religious practices. They are defined by us gathering together. This, I believe, is the central lesson of our faith. And the reason I know it's defined by our context is because even the scriptures are defined by their context. They matter. Paul did not write one letter to all churches. Paul wrote specific letters to different churches because they all needed different things to be pushed towards becoming a more holy, radical community. Paul did not generalize. Paul was saying, you, in that town, doing this thing, this is what you need to listen to. And yes, there are transcendent themes that we can get from those letters but the Spirit is speaking something new to each of us and each of our communities today. These places where we experience the divine without need to define ourselves by a religion or to connect to one another in a holy divine way because of a religion that is not necessary. It is not what connects us at the roots Community is the goal, I believe, and it is and will always be based on the context it is found in. For mine, it was with a queer Asian atheist friend talking to me, a queer Latinx Christian friend. We made a cathedral, and it didn't need to follow any doctrine for the divine to come in. It didn't need to follow any theological rules or boxes for God or Jesus or Moses or Buddha to come in and say, I am a part of this. I don't need you to name me. I don't need you to define me. You know I'm here. (sighs) The lectionary this week was in Luke, I believe it's 23, 33 to 43. And the passage is where Jesus tells the person on his right, on the cross, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. This person asked Jesus, please, can I be, can I be with you? Can you welcome me into your kingdom? And Jesus says, yes. Because no matter the social labels and perceived or real mistakes that someone has made or their mere existence, they were asking Jesus to be let into community. And even then, at the end, Jesus said yes. He made space. While the religious leaders and soldiers placed bets on his death and split up his clothes, he and a socially labeled criminal, who would we define that as today? The white supremacist society would say it's a black woman, a girl, black girl, man, boy, non-binary or trans person, an immigrant or disabled or indigenous person. 
people too different and difficult for wealthy religious white society to allow space for Jesus and this human being crucified, killed by the state, created community, even in their last damned breaths. And so it was that they were saved because they were together and because they chose to be. Amen. And may you go in peace knowing that your community and your context beyond any religious label or lack thereof matters. Your community, your choice to join together is where the divine will meet you. Is where hope and love and grace will meet you. Amen.